guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 25, Hard and Soft G. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your green book open to page 155. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key. Now you'll notice I already went ahead and used pink vertical lines to break our words into syllables and purple check marks to mark off the stressed syllable. If you would like to mark up your page, go ahead and do that now. All right, so we have spent several weeks talking about derivational suffixes and we noticed that a particular cluster of letters at the end of a word can change that word's part of speech. It can change a noun to a verb, a verb to an adjective, etc. Well, if you do a quick scan of this list, you'll notice that we have many different endings. Our focus this week is not derivational suffixes, although we will talk about a few of them. Our main focus this week is hard G and soft G. So the first thing I want you to do as we read this list together is pay attention to those G's and notice if they're making a hard G sound or a soft J sound. And then we will go back and talk about those in a second. But first, let's read our list. Repeat after me. Analogy, apology, archaeology, biology, chronology, disadvantage, ecology, epilogue, geologist, geology, intriguing, meteorology, monologue, mythology, psychologist, Psychology, synagogue, technology, terminology, zoology. Okay, choose a color. And what I want you to do now is look for all of the soft G's. And I want you to pay careful attention to see what letter follows that soft G. So for instance, in the word analogy, G is followed by Y. In apology, it's also followed by Y. Archaeology, G-Y. Biology, G-Y. Are you noticing a pattern yet? Chronology, G-Y. Disadvantage, G-E. Ecology, G-Y. Geologist, we have two. We have G-E and G-I. Geology, we also have two. G-E and G-Y. Intriguing, no soft G's there. Meteorology, G-Y. Nothing in monologue. Mythology, G-Y. Psychologist, G-I. Psychology, G-Y. Nothing in synagogue. Technology, G-Y. Terminology, G-Y. And zoology, G-Y. So everything I just underlined has a soft G, which means it makes a J sound. But I want you to notice soft G only hangs out with Y, with E, and with I. That's it. You will never see soft G alone at the end of a word. It will have to have a babysitter letter. So even if you're trying to write a word like cage or huge or fudge, you'll have that E there to babysit it. 
okay? I think this is something you're familiar with. Hopefully this is something you learned back in second or third grade. That soft G is always followed by the letters E, I, or Y. Now let's look for some hard Gs. Choose a second color. And this time we have analogy of hard Epilogue. There's a hard G, G, followed by U. Intriguing. There's a hard G, followed by U. I'm going to ignore that G because that's part of the NG, a whole different pattern. Um, monologue, G, U. Synagogue, G, U, and also G, O. And I think that's it. So hard G on our list this week is followed by an O or a U. It can also be followed by an A or a consonant like L or R. So it's almost like soft G and hard G divvied up the alphabet. I said, okay, you can have these three vowels. I'll take A, O, and U throw in the um, consonants here. Okay, so this is important because one of the um, Greek roots that we're learning about this week is log. Anytime you see a word that has log or a log, L-O-G-U-E, in it, it's going to have something to do with words, okay? Notice that that U-E is just there, or the U is there to, as like a buffer zone to separate the G from the E, because if you just put a babysitter E there, it would make it J, right? And in our language, it's very rare to see a hard G sound at the end of a multisyllabic word. I know we see it at the end of small words like rug and big and bag, but when you get to words that are two or three syllables, it's very uncommon to end a word with a hard G. And when it does end with a hard G sound, it's often followed by U-E. So I'm going to show you some examples of that. Um, let's look at the word epilogue. There's that chunk. So if you open up a novel, You've got the story in there. Sometimes at the beginning of the book, they give you a little um, background knowledge. They might tell you what happened maybe a week before the story occurred. That's called the prologue. If you go all the way to the back of the book, there might be an epilogue. It tells you what happened later. So an epilogue, we're just gonna say words at the end of a book. Okay, which makes sense because log and log both are related to words. Okay, we see that again in monologue. If you ever stay up late and watch Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel or one of those other late night comedian shows, they always start with a monologue. Mono means one. So it's just the one comedian, the host, standing up telling jokes, okay? So a monologue is just one person talking. You're, I'm sure you're familiar with dialogue, right? In a story, we put the quotation marks in there to show that characters are talking. That's called dialogue, right? Di means two. Monologue means one. So a monologue shows up at the beginning of a comedy show. Synagogue does not have log in it, but it does have G-U-E. Um, I guess that's it. Although I do want you to notice a word like this, analog. Analogy has log in it, right? An analogy is a comparison that uses words, right? 
rock is to hard as pillow is to soft. We use words to compare rocks and pillows. So that's where the log in analogy comes from. We also see that in apology, right? When you make an apology, you use words to express your regret or your sorrow. I'm sorry, right? Okay. Um, if we talk about terminology, there's log again. Terminology means specific words. Every field has its own terminology, right? If you're going to become a mechanic, you're going to need to learn the terminology. What are the words we use to describe the parts of a car? What are the words we use to describe problems with a car? If you join the medical field, you'll have to learn a whole different vocabulary, all different terminology. What are the words we use to describe symptoms or unhealthy patients or medicines, procedures, okay? So terminology just means the specific words that are used in a field. Okay, so over here, anything I boxed in red has log or log, L-O-G-U-E, and it has something to do with words, okay? Now, there's another, that's Greek, there's another Greek root, um, or maybe it's considered a suffix, that I want to show you. You probably notice that a lot of our words end with logi, or logi, or theology. When you see a word that ends like that, it often means the study of. If you think about different scientific fields, zoology, biology, archaeology, they end with this. So archaeology is the study of remains. Meaning, you go to a site, you dig, it, dig up the ground, you find fossils, you find old pots and pans, you find old cave markings. If you are an archaeologist or you are studying archaeology, you will be fascinated by that because by studying those remains, you can learn about the past. So archaeology is the study of remains, things that are left, so that we can learn about the past. Biology is the study of living things, plants and animals. You see bio in there, right? Bio means life. Chronology is the study of time and like sequence of events. So when you are writing a story, usually you use chronology, you put things in chronological order. You tell what happened first, next, then, and last. So chronology is just the study of time and putting things in order. Ecology is the study of nature and interactions. It's the study of how plants and animals and the environment and the weather all work together. So the study of nature's, I'm just gonna say, the study of nature's interactions. Okay, when I think about ecology, I think about food webs and food chains and all that. Geology is the study of rocks and minerals. Okay, meteorology. Now this is crazy, you would think, oh, well meteorology must be the study of meteors, right? Those things that are up in the sky, but no, meteorology is the study of weather. You turn on the local news and you have a meteorologist, a person standing there telling you if it's gonna rain or snow or freeze tonight. Mythology is the study of myths, right? Stories, myths are stories that have been passed down. Psychology, 
study of the human mind, the brain. Right? You meet with a psychologist to talk about your feelings, to make sense of the things that are that you're thinking about in your brain. Technology. Well, technology is like any new science, any new inventions and new advancements and how we can use that for practical purposes. So a piece of technology that was huge in the early 1900s was the automobile or the refrigerator. A piece of technology that's very important right now would be the cell phone, okay? So let's say technology is the study of science, and new inventions and how they can be applied in practical ways. Okay, and then zoology, well, I bet you can guess what this means. If you look at zoo right there, it's the study of animals. Okay, so anything I boxed in blue has the logi or logi suffix, and it means the study of something. It refers to a branch of science or learning. Okay, but then we have some other words that end with gist. So a geologist is a person who studies rocks. Okay, a geologist is a person who studies geology. A biologist is a person who studies biology. An archaeologist is a person who studies archaeology. A meteorologist is a weather person, a person who studies meteorology. A psychologist is a person who studies psychology, okay? So, orange box, we have another suffix here, gist, and it refers to a person who studies something. I apologize, my handwriting's a mess. Okay, so just by Thinking about these three Greek word chunks, log and log, logi and gist, we covered most of our list here. We just have a few words that we didn't talk about. Um, we know what an advantage is, right? If you have an advantage, um, you have a better chance than someone else, right? So if you are tall, you are going to have an advantage when you play basketball, because it's gonna be easier for you to get the ball and make the baskets. If you are short, that's going to be a disadvantage. It's going to work against you, okay? So a disadvantage, think of it as a weakness or maybe a problem, okay? It's something that works against you. Intriguing. Well, we have the word intrigue, right? If something intrigues you, you're really curious about it. But when we change intrigue to intriguing, we drop that E because we're adding on an ING, um, a vowel suffix. So if something's intriguing, it's very interesting. Like I think that learning about the history of words is very intriguing. You may or may not agree with me. Um, synagogue. Well, we haven't talked about that, but a few months ago we talked about that prefix sin. Sin, sim, sil, right? We see that at a, in a lot of words that come to us from Greek, and they all have something to do with together right? So a synagogue is a place where Jewish people come together to pray and learn about their faith, okay? It's also known as a temple, 
okay? Um, so that is a, a religious place for Jewish people. It's a synagogue and they come together. All right, so that's all the vocab for you. And let's just quickly look through our list. I think you're gonna do fine with this. When you get to 158, you have a whole bunch of words that end with logi, ecology, psychology, biology. You just have to match the word with its definition. Most of them we already talked about. The rest of them, I think you can figure out. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Good luck, and I will see you next time.